The DFT calculation involves a summation over all of the time steps from 1 to n max. As a result, our DFT code will need a time stepping loop, just like our Maxwell's equations code. Then at each time step, so actually we can go ahead and start writing our loop. So we're first we're going to loop through all the time steps. And then at each time step, we want to update the summation that we're performing at each frequency. So now we can have another do loop where now we're going to loop through all the frequencies of interest. And at this point, we're going to update the real part the first term of our DFT calculation, and then we're going to update, so tack on an extra term every time, the imaginary part. And then we need to also end the time stepping loop. Notice that for the summation of the imaginary part, we can ignore the J. We already know it's an imaginary number when we're saving it in the FTI from the I, it's an imaginary number. So multiplying by J is not needed and we're going to square the result anyway when we calculate the magnitude. Lastly, for the third part of the code, I recommend you plot the time waveform so that you can check to make sure it looks like what you're expecting, and also that you plot the magnitude of the spectrum. So first, if we plot the time waveform versus time steps, we can use plot time waveform that we had defined earlier and then you can also make sure to increase the line width so it's easier to read. So make sure you also label the axes and increase the font sizes as, you done, as, as you've done previously. When you plot the magnitude in a separate plot, I recommend you plot only over the frequencies of interest, which you can calculate from the omega array. So if you take your omega array and divide by 2 pi, that'll give us the frequencies. And you, if you want to plot versus frequency, you can start by writing plot omega, and you can divide by two times pi. And since we want to divide every number in this array by two pi in MATLAB, we put a period and then a slash to say that I want to take all the numbers in this whole array and divide by two pi. So that will be the x-axis, and along the y-axis, we want to plot the magnitude. I recommend you normalize the magnitude so we can see the magnitude of the spectrum relative to a maximum of 1. So we're going to take mag, the magnitude, and that's an array also. So I'm going to have dot and divided by the max value in that one-dimensional array, so max of mag. And again, you can increase the the line width, and label the axes and so forth. Okay, well I suggest you pause the video here and try to finish writing and testing your DFT code. Run it first for the same source waveform that we used in our Maxwell's equations code, a square wave that was on for 20 time steps. And in this case, n max was equal to 50. And remember delta x, it's called delta in your code, is now 4.3 millimeters.